I know the country, maybe better than some Americans. I've driven from Washington all the way to California, Iraq war. I fought with them. I was the one who would send intelligence from this part of the world to the NSA on Sudan and Yemen and Somalia. The NSA knows me. I would fight and die for America. Over dinner, at a long table by a swimming pool, we listened as Abi spoke about how Ethiopia could be useful to its allies. For one thing, he suggested Ethiopia could fight their wars for them. He had noticed that Westerners no longer seemed eager to send their sons into combat, but Ethiopians were good fighters, he said, and did not have the same qualms. FDR said about another dictator. He may be a son of a bitch, but he's a son of a bitch. You see, we've had a policy of propping up dictators for more than 50 years now. In a shocking admission to New Yorker journalist John Lee, he shamelessly confessed to being available as a mercenary, lacking the dignity befitting a self-respecting leader. The audacity of asserting that the West avoids death while endorsing the sacrifice of his own people is beyond outrageous. He's shamelessly pushing Ethiopians into a deadly situation in Somalia for a cause they neither comprehend nor should be involved in, all for his own insatiable greed for dollars. These Ethiopians are not mere pawns. They are individuals with families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. Yet Abi heartlessly disregards their lives for his selfish agenda. What kind of leader speaks of their people in such a callous and heartless manner? The fact that millions have perished in the last five years under his leadership is tragically unsurprising. Abi stands accused of war crimes, exhibiting a pattern of murderous behavior. We strongly hope that the US continues to keep its distance from this alleged war criminal and an individual branded by Ethiopians as a con artist one who deceitfully rose to power and is considered unfit and undeserving.